Hello, my name is Marcus, and this is going to be weird. So now we're back here in After Effects, and we got this text doing absolutely nothing, but I want to scale it up over time. So right now the anchor point is at the bottom. So if I press S for scale and scale it, it's going to scale from the bottom. I don't want that. So I'm going to hold Control down and double click on the pan behind tool and Bam, now you have an anchor point in the middle of your layer. That's beautiful. So I'm going to keyframe the scale. I'm going to go all the way down, let's say to the end actually, and say 110, because that's just the way we roll, baby. Now we want to pre-compose this bad boy. So go up into layer and pre-compose or control shift C. I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to call this text. So now we're going to create a control layer that is going to control the displacement and the noise layers and the delay. So go up into layer, new, and null object, and let's just call this bad boy control. There we go. So here we're going to start applying some noises and stuff. So go over here into effects and presets and write fractal noise. Oh yes, double click on that little bad boy. And we're also going to apply a tint. You guessed it, you knew it before I said it. I'm going to go into the black color here of the tint effect and we've got to set it to 50% gray. Now the reason for this is because we only want it to displace when it's completely white and when it's gray we want it to do absolutely nothing. And last but not least we're also going to apply a slider effector to this layer. So go over here to effects and call slider control. Double click. I'm going to call this bad boy delay. Whoops not decay. Delay. There we go. And this is going to control the delay of the different displacements. So that's kind of cool. So now let's make our noise layers. So new layer new solid and let's just call this noise let's not be fancy here let's just call it what it is noise a because we actually want to have several different kinds of noises set up here so first of all i'm going to select uh, from the control layer here i'm going to select fractal noise and tint i'm going to go into edit and copy with property links so when we paste it onto the noise a it's going to link to all the properties of the control which is pretty darn cool now i'm going to press Control shift c to pre-compose Move all attributes, yes please. And we're still gonna call it noise A. Bam! Now we're gonna put this at the bottom and we can actually hide it because we don't need it for much else other than displacement. Now I'm gonna duplicate this text composition here and call it text A. You probably see where I'm going with this. So noise A is gonna affect text A and noise B is gonna affect text B, etc., etc. So let's just hide the original text here and let's start playing around with text A. So first of all, let's apply a displacement map. You guessed it. And we're gonna link this to the noise A. I'm gonna set it to luminance all the way down. We're gonna increase the displacement something horrendous, like 300 and 300. We want it to really, really displace the living heck out of it. And now we're gonna apply an effect called set mat so set and mat there we go and we're going to make it look at the original text there we go so now it's being alphabeted out by the original text and we also want this to look at the effects and masks because we're going to affect the displacement of the text later on so now we're going to start playing around with how the noise actually appears or how the text actually appears so go over to control here and set it to block so we get these nice blocky blocks and we're going to play around with the brightness. So let's increase the brightness until it is no longer visible at all. Let's just keyframe this bad boy here. And go over into, let's say, second seven. And do the exact opposite. You just decrease the brightness until it is fully visible. So see, already now we got some sexiness going on here as it displaces on. We can even hide the null so it's not annoying us here. If you feel like it's too complex, you can actually set it to like a five or something, maybe even four in complexity. So it becomes more blocky and that's always nice having some blockiness as it displaces on. So see right now it's actually not displacing outside the original text, but we actually do want that. So go over into text, the original text here, and let's just apply a good old fashioned simple choker. Double click on that bad boy and just decrease it in the minus. As you can see here, it starts to displace a little bit outside the boundaries of the original text which is, let's say together, pretty cool. So see, now this is where the complexity comes into play here. So let's just go into the project here. Let's just clean up a little bit. Let's put this into pre-comps. There we go. 
exciting news. I'm on the verge of finishing a new animation tool that allows you to quickly animate many layers at once with dynamic offsets and even randomness. Not only can you offset animation, but you can also loop them, make them exponential, and even offset effects. Join the creative journey and let's make animation magic together. Keep a lookout for Cheesy Echo. All right, so now we want several different type of noises at once. So let's duplicate noise here. Let's call this noise B and enter this bad boy. And first of all, we can actually change around the size of this noise because we want it to be a little bit different, right? And first of all, let's go down here into transform and see if you alt click on a property that already has an expression, it will delete that expression from it. So you can freely edit it how you want. So alt click, alt click, alt click. So let's just broaden this, make this quite wide and uh, make it considerably less tall, something like this. We can even decrease the size as well. And see now the displacement of this noise, we want it to be delayed compared to the original noise. So we know we're animating the brightness here. So let's do some expression stuff. So click on the noise layer, double click E, so you bring up all the expressions. And yes, this looks very intimidating, but if we just go over here into brightness, because that's the only one we're gonna edit here. So let's play around with this here. Let's make this entire line into a variable because we still need it. So val equals all of this and then semicolon at the end here. So now we got that first part. Second part is delay. Remember we made a delay slider in the previous composition and we want to access that here. We can actually reuse almost all of this copy and paste right down here. The only thing we're actually gonna change is this part here, instead of fractal noise, we wanted to call delay. There we go, it's linking to it for us. And instead of brightness, we just want it to be one because that's how you link to the only property in the delay slider. So next here, we're gonna write val. As you can see, we're using the value of the original noise here dot value at time. There we go. So we wanted to still show us the value at this current time. So we're going to write time. So it gives us the straight up time minus delay. And we wanted to look at this variable here. And whamma lama ding dong, we now have an expression that is being delayed from the original value. So how do we actually affect this? So we go over here into our main comp here, into the control, and let's set the delay to let's say one. So it's one second offset from the original value. So the cool thing is if we duplicate this noise down here and replace it with this noise B, so if you hold Alt down and then drag it on top, then it replaces that composition however it is in the composition. And now we can click on the text A here, duplicate it, call it B. There we go. So first of all, we're gonna make sure that these links to the correct noises. And as you can see, the text B is already linking to the correct one, but the text A is probably not. Yeah, see, it's linking to the same one. So have it linked to noise A to make sure that they're offset. There we go. So see text B here, we're gonna make some fun little stuff here. So first of all, we're gonna write find edges. There we go, double click. See, now we get these nice lines. If I isolate this, you can see we get these nice little lines. Problem is, it's very detailed. So if we go into noise B here, we can maybe uh, set the complexity down to maybe, uh, let's just out click on complexity and set it down to three, maybe. Go back here. Maybe even uh, increase it in size, maybe it's too small. So let's just increase it in size here, elongate it a bit so we get these nice streaks. So right now it's not doing a very good job of finding the edges because it is based on the alpha of the image. So we can uh, simplify this or fix this in a few different ways. So I'm just gonna write simple choker in the effects here, double click, and I'm gonna put it below the find edges. I'm just gonna expand it until I can see all these nice gorgeous edges here. So there we go. Next I'm gonna write invert because I wanted to turn black to white and white to black. Already now we're getting some sexiness here. And then I'm gonna write unmold. Yes, dear God, yes. This is gonna remove all the black from the image as you can see from here and whamma lama ding dong. If you don't wanna actually download this uh, free effects that I'm linking to in the description, you can actually find it as a separate one here. You can see it's actually also appearing. It is the alpha from lightness on malt. It's the exact same thing. It just adds several different effects to recreate it. And now we're gonna add a tint effect. There we go, tint. Now let's just give it something nice and uh, cyan here, some nice, a 
let's just give it some nice cyan there we go and let's just add some glow maybe something like dias and let's set it to screen because we don't want it to burn out i'm going to set the threshold quite low because i want it to glow all the way i'm going to set the radius down so let's say five and i'm going to choose my own colors so i'm going to say maybe actually i'm going to color pick the cyan here or this blue here and once again color pick make it a little bit darker something like this duplicate it once again let's maybe set it up to 15. you know what let's set it up to higher higher and higher and color pick the dark one and make it even darker blue or something like this so we get this nice more complexity blue here so now we got this first layer of complexity going on here you can even set it to different blending modes and stuff like that and see the bottom one here we're actually going to duplicate text a and place it on top of text b and call it text c not b c so let's uh, start duplicating the last noise here so duplicate noise and go up into project and duplicate noise here again and call it c there we go and hold out down drag it down and there we go I'm just going to move this at the bottom. So go into noise C here. And as you remember, we changed the expression of the brightness down here. And the only thing we're going to do here is in the delay variable, we're going to multiply it by two. So whatever the previous value is, it's going to be multiplied. So this last noise is going to be offset from the previous noise. So up in text C here, we're going to set the noise to, of course, look at noise C. So the text A here, we're going to add some different stuff here. So we're going to add some tint effects here double click and let's just make this quite dark something maybe 40 in darkness something along these lines so we get this nice little noisiness going on here and we can even go into the noise a here and make it more complex so let's uh, go into transform i'll click i'll click i'll click i'll click i'll click and let's just take it down to like 30 30 so it's quite small so it becomes like this nice little complexity thing here that's uh, self-building and then it builds upon itself. So let's also make it a little bit more mechanical. So let's go into text uh, C here and add a nice little drop shadow. Drop shadow here. There we go. And, you know, let's just uh, 65, maybe 7 in distance. So, you know, it actually seems like something mechanical appearing on top of whatever's below, which is quite nice as they're locking into place. Now we can start adding a background to this thing. So I'm going to go up into layer, new, solid, or control Y, as you can see here. I'm going to call this BG for background. I'm going to put it all the way at the bottom here, and I'm going to add a gradient. A gradient ramp. Where well, There you go. And we're going to set this to radio ramp so it becomes circular. I'm going to swap the colors so the bright one is the top one here. I'm going to maybe put it in the middle here and expand the black, the darkness here, something like this. Uh, we can make it quite uh, dark, so like 30 and maybe even give it some blue if you're so inclined. Maybe something like this. And already you've got a little bit of a background here. You can even like add some textures to it if you wanted to add some complexity, maybe some fractal noise. Uh, and you can even keyframe it. So like when the logo starts to be brightest, let's say it's eight here at an exposure, double click on this thing to this background. So let's just uh, click on the gamma correction, keyframe it. And here at the beginning, we just decrease the gamma until it's almost completely black. So we have it like just up here over time, something like this. You'll be able to add some flicker or whatever you want to this to give it even more life you can even add some uh, shadows to this bottom text a as well if you wanted to it's a drop shadow maybe even something uh, like quite long so it just adds a little bit more of a contact shadow with the background if you want to receive a mail whenever there are new templates advanced templates tools presets courses etc then i would recommend joining the newsletter you can find the link in the description if you enjoy these type of text and logo animation tutorials then i can definitely recommend the playlist shown here on the left i really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i'm looking forward to see what you guys can create with these type of effects have a wonderful day with some cheese